This is the Digging Deeper podcast, where we engage in today's questions from a Christian perspective. Hello, everyone. I'm Josh Toth here with Dale Wickeiser. He teaches apologetics here at Burke Community Church and is one of the breakout speakers at the Digging Deeper conference this year. Today, we'll be talking about reality. I think that idea of, of your sense of reality breaking down that you've experienced in a really intense way, yeah. how does that inform the way you evangelize and so i guess you know so this podcast isn't just for believers this mm. is for you know anyone to kind no, of no 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 that's so. a great question um so you know truth is central right mm-hmm. i mean when jesus was before pontius pilate i mean jesus said the reason i was born and came into the world was to was to testify to the truth mm-hmm. right and he said everybody who is on the side of truth basically listens to me mm-hmm. right you're on my side if you're if you care about truth. Mm. Jesus took sides, and it's like whoa. <laughs> yeah. And then Pilate, of course, being a politician, you know, in his cynical way, what is truth, right? Mm. And he had basically the source of all reality standing before him, mm-hmm. and didn't know it. He yeah. was blinded to it. You yeah. Know? And that's just amazing. But so, truth is very important. But the classical definition of truth is that which corresponds to reality and rc sproul used to say um truth truth is that which corresponds to reality as god sees reality because god mm-hmm. has an uninhibited view of reality is the source of it yeah right? okay and so reality has a way of rearing its ugly head every mm-hmm. time i mean you see it uh today i mean i feel sorry for people for example in um in the transgender movement where they think that they can make their own reality well no reality is going to bite you mm-hmm. Right. And so, um, yeah, so reality is very important. And so, you know, in our course, you know, we always in the reality check course, I teach people that, you know, you're dis- you're supposed to be disciple makers as a Christian. Mm-hmm. Right. And a disciple maker is someone who is a witness. And the word for that is martyr <laughs> in mm-hmm. the Bible. Right. Um, you're a witness. You're a defender, which is an apologist. And you're an ambassador. Right, that's what it means to be a disciple maker, and to be a witness, it's all you're all about truth. And so we get into that, and then so the next question is, okay, if real, if truth is what corresponds to reality, what's reality, mm-hmm. right? And we and we delve into that deeply, and that's what I want to talk about at the course. And because um, there are some people classically, like Immanuel Kant and folks like that, who believe you can't know anything about, you can't know anything at all about reality. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, you know that. Yeah, a little, <laughs> so a obviously little you know defeating. something about yeah. it, right? Um, so you know it's kind of amazing to um, just delve into it and think about what is reality. Do mm-hmm. you know what reality is? What's reality? What's reality? Yeah, how would you define reality? Oh man, turn the tables on me like that. Yeah, um, I'm an apologist. That's what I do. <laughs> what reality, is reality? Yeah, I think. It's, I would define it as it's not what, it's independent of your consideration of it. It's not, I think this is true, or I think this is true. It's like, you can think this is true, and I can think Mm. this is right, and I can think this is right, and we can disagree, but the reality is is not based on my Yeah, the whole scientific endeavor is the discovery of of reality, right, Mm -hmm. Uh, that's around you. There are Mm -hmm. things that exist that are true, and they're true regardless of what you think about them. Yeah. And there are some things you haven't discovered yet, right? Mm-hmm. So, so that 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 gives several things about reality that right there, right? Yeah. You don't know everything. Mm-hmm. There is to know about reality, so it's big. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and so, um, you can't know everything about reality because there are limitations in your design. Mm-hmm. For example. When you look at the electromagnetic spectrum, um, you see light in about 300 nanometers to 700 nanometers, mm-hmm. right? That Roy G. Biv thing, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's where you see everything. But if you look at the electromagnetic spectrum, it's huge. Mm-hmm. You're, and, and we see just a tiny portion of it, right? Mm-hmm. Wow. <clears throat> the same thing with our hearing. We hear in about, you know, uh, I forget the range. I think it's like twenty to twenty kilohertz. Mm-hmm. Right, is the range we we effectively yeah. hear in. Well, dogs, really yeah, you know, hear 
outside of that range, mm. right? And bats and things like yeah. that, right? So we're limited by design. <clears throat> we're, um, they ran uh, in 2012, they finished up a big experiment called the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy P- Probe. And the, and, the, and the very humbling thing that they discovered besides the age of the universe um, and, and the, the shape of the universe, which they believe, um, or the shape of space-time, mm. they found that of everything we can see with all of our instruments and all, everything else, we see only about 4 or 5% mm. of what's there. And they, they reached that conclusion because space-time is the stretching of space time is happening at an accelerating rate. Oh, wow. And to have that happen, you had to have what they, what they now term dark energy and dark matter, which uh-huh. means we don't know what it is. Yeah. But so, so 95 to 96% of it is that stuff that we can't, we don't know what it is. So is that when you say we see four or 5%, is that mean we like four or five percent is what's accessible here, or is that and it's accessible the other to us? Is it's, it, it, the beyond other 90, the universe? The other ninety-six percent of it is something we don't even know what or it is. Or is it like that's like around you and I right now in this room? No, it's around it's, us. It's yeah. around us, but we don't know what it is. That's crazy, right? Okay, yeah. it's humbling, right? Yeah. And so you see scientists who are locked in scientism, who, which is the false philosophy that believes you can only discern truth by scientific method, mm. right? Fails its own test, of course. Um, but that ought to be a wake up call to them because mm-hmm. if that's true, then you don't know much, mm. right? Yeah. About what's out there. Can you go back to it fails its own test? Why does scientism fail its own test? Because they say, they say, um, uh, they say that, uh, you can only discern truth by the scientific method, mm-hmm. right? Which means you have to devise a scientific test. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, what about the statement that you can only, dis- that you can only discern truth by a scientific method. That's a statement. That's mm. a true statement. Mm. Tell me the scientific experiment you used to actually mm. come up with that. Interesting. Yeah. They, they didn't. They just assert it. Yeah. Okay. It's not oh, true. Wow. Right. So yeah. it's self refuting. Mm. See yeah. what I mean? So when you have statements that are self refuting like that, um, they blow up, basically. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I want to go back. So, what do you talk a little bit about? disagreements in reality well can i go back one step yes one step of course so what what difference does all this make right um reality Uh uh-huh okay um it makes all the difference in the world i mean when i increasingly now i try to follow the apostle paul when he towards the end of his life where he said i care about one thing i care to know christ and him Mm. crucified Mm. and 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 the more i go the more I realize how true that is. Yeah. Right? Because it's all about Jesus Christ, who he said he was and who he demonstrated himself to be when he predicted his death, he died on the cross and rose again, showing he was the Son of God as he claimed, right? Yeah. And if that's true, then all of reality, basically in all of history, warps around him. Mm. He is the source of all reality. In Colossians one, it basically says that that you know he and the Father, he you know created all things. All things were created for him and through him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. He's the source of all reality, and he sustains it. Yeah. Now, I moment wanna... to moment, all think for a minute. I mean, we we have the Lord's Prayer where it says where we say you know give us this day our daily bread. We don't mm. we don't understand that's nothing compared to what God actually does moment to moment. God sustains your very being and reality moment to moment. If he were to withdraw that, everything would cease to be. Mm, yeah. Now I want to devil's advocate a little bit. Okay. So not what, that he needs help. <laughs> okay. Um, what? How do you know that that's not a self-refuting statement, right? Because you know, if you if you argue against that, we could say, well, which is that which, that for example, that reality is all circles around Jesus, time and space, and well, that, you know, right? I mean, so, that's that's so if. If um, if Jesus is truly God and truly the Son of God, which he demonstrated himself to be, mm-hmm. then Jesus testified to the truth of Scripture, mm-hmm. which means the Bible really is God's Word, and that saying in First Colossians is true, mm-hmm. which says, or where God reveals that Christ not only created all things, mm-hmm. right, but they were created for him. Yeah. 
and he sustains it moment to moment. Uh-huh. That's in the Bible itself. So, um, but if Jesus was not raised from the dead, none of that's true. And he wasn't even a good teacher. He was a liar or a lunatic or he's yeah. a... Yeah, that's what I was going right. to say, because if you if you right. trace that process, yeah. right, like, yeah. I think the big, the big hinging point, hmm? which you would obviously articulate also, hmm. is that he proved himself to be. And if he hadn't proved himself to be that, then the fact that this book says yeah. this about him would be like, well, yeah. that's a claim... You know, so how? Uh, um, yeah, Christianity, Christianity, and which um, when I have this discussion with people mm-hmm. who don't believe about or who are struggling with the belief in Christianity, I mm-hmm. say, well, uh, as far as I know, Christianity is the only falsifiable religion, and they mm-hmm. look at me kind of weird, you know, because that's a scientific term, mm-hmm. right? And they say, what do you mean? I said, well, Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. Okay, and then he rose from the dead three mm. days afterwards, as he, as he predicted, right? Yeah. Okay, all you have to do is prove that didn't happen, and Christianity falls apart. Mm. Okay? Even within its own claims, like you said. Even with its own like, claims, it all falls apart, Yeah. And, right? And the Apostle Paul said, you know, if Christ is not rise from, raised from the dead, then we're, piti- the, we're the most pitiful people in, in history, yeah. right? You know, you might as well eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow you die, and that's mm. it, okay? Yeah. I mean, Paul said that. Yeah, and so yeah, it's you know if Jesus is who he said he is, um, then there's a lot out there, right? Yeah. And you know, one of the other things, getting back also to reality, why we don't see a lot of reality also because of sin. Mm. Sin darkens everything we see through a glass darkly because of that too. So mm. I just wanted to tie off that That's as cool, well, yeah. right? Because so there's a lot of reality out there we don't see. We live in four dimensions. We're in our space time. It's four dimensions. It's believed that ultimate reality is up to ten dimensions, maybe mm. more. Okay, yeah. I don't even know how to get my mind around that. Mm. I just know in mathematics, um, um, you know, when you work on equations like uh, the Maxwell's equations or the Navier-Stokes equations and things like that, mm. you have these um, nine-dimensional spatial elements called tensors that you need to make the math work. Mm-hmm. So if you have nine dimensions there and you have time, you have 10 dimensions, right? Okay. And Stephen Hawking in his string theory, I think, also came up with 10 or 11 dimensions or something like that, right? So if you think about that for a minute, you know, there's a whole realm where that God inhabits that could be 10 dimensions or more, Yeah. right? And he's not alone. He has an, the whole angelic host. So reality, all of reality includes all of that stuff, which we have no access to. Mm. What do you think that does between the right. divide in these conversations, even between like faith and science? And and there's I was talking with a friend the other day who was mm. kind of basically was like I have space for belief and I have space for facts. Yeah, and there's like a, you know, and I think that's I think it's a common thing, a common mindset well, today. So so it depends on what you mean by faith. I mean faith is not faith is not wishing, right? Mm. Um, the Greek word. The, the Greek, the root word for the word faith is the word pistis, okay? Um, from which we get the word epistemology. You know what epistemology is? No, you have to define uh, that. Epistemology me. is a philosophical study of how we know what we know. Mm-hmm. How do you know something? How do you know anything, mm-hmm. right? Pistis, epistemology. So faith is knowing. Faith, okay. is, faith is about evidence-based trust, Right? And, in, and so I think for most Christians, they look back on their life and they look at the evidence that God has had a hand in their life. It's evidence-based trust. Mm. God has a track record in their life, right? Mm. It's not wishing. Mm. We may not know everything now, but it's, you know, God has been faithful in his promises as we look back on our life, right? Yeah. And it's knowing. And so and so the, the whole business about science um, versus faith is a false dichotomy, right? Mm. Because modern science basically was started by Christians. <laughs> mm. Newton was a Christian, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Kepler, uh, Copernicus, y- you name it, Boyle. Um, yeah. All of these men were devout Christians, okay? Mm. Um, and it was, not a, it was not a materialistic only view of, of searching for the truth. I mean, mm. science means, scantia means search for truth, right? Mm-hmm. It is a... You're searching for the truth, and all matters forensically are open to you in searching for the truth, not just the scientific method, 
because once you've gathered the data, right away you're into metaphysics. You're into mm. trying to get inference to the best explanation. You're trying to look at causality. You're trying to, all these things are metaphysical, right? Yeah. And so all those things um, lend themselves to truth. I think the only, the only branch of science today that isn't methodological materialism is actually like uh, crime scene stuff, mm. forensic science, right? Mm. Because they're trying to look for agents who did bad things. Yeah. Okay. And so to reject agency is not science. Mm. Okay. And it's a false thing. We teach this in the course. But okay. Yeah. yeah. So don't, that's, yeah. A, that's, a, that's a thing that um, it's one of my pet peeves, mm. right? It's a false dichotomy. Yeah, I think it's it's super prevalent in culture and in people's mm -hmm. minds. And I mean, I think I definitely have that even internally, a sense of like, well, there's belief and there's, you know, what's 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 real. And it's easy to kind of compartmentalize. I was watching a show the other day mm -hmm. even where the guy's talking about doing some kind of meditative action. And then like this girl is like, oh, I didn't know you were into like, you know, spirit soul stuff. And he's like, it's not spiritual, it's science. And, you know, again, there's this, there's this, a def, you know, distinction between spirituality and science and there's just this incompatibility and so right. you're on one camp or another so i think it's interesting even as you mentioned like my imagination just kind of rolls with the idea of like <laughs> dark matter i'm like wow there's i think because science in that dichotomy presents itself as this light versus mm -hmm. abstract and mm -hmm. it's like there's a lot i don't know it's helpful for me as a non-scientist to hear about the abstract right. within science well it's, it's very it's the reason I also tend to focus more on Jesus in my discussions mm. um, is because just about everybody has a high opinion of Jesus, mm. right? Yeah. Even if even if people don't believe he was God, they think he was a good moral teacher, or in the case of Islam, they think he was a, f a prophet, mm. right? And all these good things. So I always yeah. like to start with Jesus because they, even though they may despise Christianity, mm -hmm. they generally have a high opinion of Jesus, Yeah. right? And And when they... Um, one of the strongest arguments for God with that, because Jesus says he's a good teacher, right, um, is, the, is the moral argument, mm. right, which is part of the search for truth. Mm. How do you know something is good? Mm. You know, you'll have people who deny God, and who, but they'll express moral outrage over something. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Um, how do you know something is good or evil? Yeah. You I've don't heard, you don't know, right? Go ahead. I've heard when I've, I've when I've engaged people about that they've been like, well, it's it's social, it's it's civilization, it's, you know, anthropological. I don't know if that's quite the the verb for that, but well, it's anthropology. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, so you establish morals based on cultural norms, okay? And some in some cultures they love their neighbor and some cultures they eat them. Mm, yeah. Right? Cannibalism is okay, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, you know, obviously cultural norms are not the standard, right? Yeah. I mean, without a moral standard, you're in the battle of preferences, mm. right? Yeah. And might makes right. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is which I, don't, we all, I don't I don't think we want to live that way, right? And we also that is something we ethically are like we see that and we don't like it when we yeah. see someone who yeah. uses that as their ethical That's standards, right. like. Uh, no, that's not that's enough right. for you to say this is good or bad. That's right. So, you yeah. know, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, so the moral argument to me is one of the most powerful arguments, and that's all metaphysical stuff. It's all about right. Mm -hmm. If you if you if you don't have a moral standard defined that defines good from evil, right from wrong, mm -hmm. right, you don't then you can't make moral statements. Okay, mm -hmm. well, you can't know that without a moral law. And you can't have a moral law without a moral law giver, mm -hmm. right? And so I find people who, who try to use, you know, moral outrage to throw God out. It's like, how do you do that, mm -hmm. right? Because without a moral law giver, there is no moral law. Without a moral law, there is no right and wrong. Yeah. So what's the question? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? See what I mean? Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Kind of just, again, a lot of this circles around this idea of, reality and then obviously with that and just with everything we've talked about there's hmm. disagreement on reality and so how yeah well, that's you... science that's science i mean so in science when you're trying to actually even the, even the limited science of today that's only purely uh, methodological materialism right you get ga facts gathered i think most people agree on the scientific method for gathering facts mm -hmm. 
after that, it's all about interpretation. Mm. And if you bring presuppositions that you automatically exclude anything about agency, for example, that's not science, right? And But because you're quickly into the metaphysical um, and you have different interpretations about what the facts you've gathered mean, mm-hmm. you're going to have you're going to have disagreement. Yeah. And that's that actually should be part of science, right? Yeah. And I think you found in the you know in the recent, you know, pandemic issue, mm-hmm. science was greatly undermined because it got politicized and people mm-hmm. who, you know, like we follow the science as if though science was this well-defined thing. It's like, mm-hmm. no. You've got to you've got to allow discussion, you've got to allow the minority report and disagreement in this stuff to get mm-hmm. at what the real truth is. That's how science actually works. Mm-hmm. And when you politically shut down half of the conversation, that's not science. Mm. That's authoritarianism, yeah. right? And that's you trying to basically use um, uh, appealing to moral author- or, or, or scientific authority, basically, mm-hmm. to do what you want to do right? yeah. to people. That's might makes right. <clears throat> yeah. Right? What is that? What does that process look like in on the street? You know, in someone's life when they're, for maybe a believer who's engaging with non Christians, mm-hmm. um, how does that look? Or how does you know, I guess specifically for that, how does a Christian who who is going to say, I believe in this ultimate reality that I don't fully grasp, but that I recognize is there, and that not lining yourself up with it is detrimental to you, mm-hmm. but someone who's you know not lined up with it is like, well, I am lined up with a reality or maybe they're, they don't feel that they are, but there's disagreement. How does that engagement, how do you, you know, and especially as someone who's, who's seen your, your reality shatter and felt the pain of that, like what is, how does that inform the way? I I think, I think so everybody, you know, has their view on reality, their lens, it's called a worldview. Mm -hmm. Everybody has one, whether they know it or not, you know, and that, and it's kind of tough because, that those worldviews have things in them that you know are true, things that you think are true, you, some things that are contradictory, you just haven't addressed them mm. yet, and things you don't know, right? Yeah. And yet you still use that to inform your decisions day and day. And I, and I think you know our lives as Christians is actually taking that lens or that worldview and calibrating it to the prime standard, which is Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. right? over time. I mean, that's part of the process of sanctification mm. is also getting that lens polished up so that we see reality more biblically, mm. right? Okay. Um, but people, you know, um, it's more than just science. It's more than just, you know, arguments for God. There are things out there um, that that just reach into your inner being, right? And God's a part of that reality as well, like mm. beauty, you know, you you walk in the mountains and you look at the majesty of the mountains and and something inside of you in the core being just say, "Wow, that's that's beautiful." Or you, mm-hmm. or you see a painting and you say, "That's gorgeous. That's fantastic." And you can't explain it. You just yeah react to it, right? Yeah. Well, you know, God is the source of all reality, including that that beauty, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Um, and likewise, there are people who walk around, um, you know, and they don't know what to do with their guilt. Mm-hmm. Guilt, like beauty, is something visceral. You have this built-in mechanism, this conscience within mm-hmm. you, right? Yeah. That people suffer from guilt, and they walk around in guilt, and and so you have all these worldviews out there. But Christianity is the only one that gives you a solution to your guilt. Mm. Right, yeah, which is something um, existential in nature mm-hmm. as well, right? You know, see what I mean? Yeah, it's about your very existence. Yeah, and so part of being, I think, a good evangelist is listening to that heart cry of people because people's people's um, you know apologetics and evangelism kind of work hand in hand. Apologetics is like clearing the bushes you know, of all the false arguments and false things mm-hmm. out there to give people a clear view of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the solution to the existential problems of life, and to, including your guilt. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and what happens when we die? Everybody's going to die and you face that, right? Mm-hmm. What kind of, does that, you know, is that view give you hope yeah. when you die or is it something that doesn't? See what I mean? Yeah. And so that's, about the, you know, the whole... 
art of Christian persuasion, which is apologetics, is that is clearing those bushes to give people a clear mm-hmm. view of Jesus, right? Yeah, yeah. Does that help? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Do you have any examples that come to mind of, for example, you know, someone who isn't aligned with the reality of who Jesus is, but they sense beauty or something, and where, like, maybe even personally, you've connected with someone and been able to, you know, you someone you just rub shoulders with in the street, who you can connect with them about the things in their worldview that are true and bring, you know, them to the worldview of, of who Jesus is. Well, that's a, that's a tall order because it's as varied as the people, mm-hmm. you know, out there. Yeah. I mean, if you have any like stories or just general thoughts on, well, my, it was kind of funny. My, my, um, uh, my best friend, who turned out to be my best, he's no longer alive now, but uh, old Air Force Colonel, mm-hmm. he and I used to go out walking every morning at like six in the morning and solve the world's problems, you know, before breakfast type yep. thing. And we were walking one day and he said, hey, did you did you see the most recent uh, uh, Time magazine, you know, the man of the century type thing? And he and he said, and then we, I forget who it was that year that they that they honored in time magazine Mm. and he says who do you think the most important person is in the last hundred years i said jesus christ Mm -hmm. and he's a catholic he looked at me says well he died in 1900 so i don't know i said well i don't know about you but my bible says he rose again he ascended into heaven and he's alive today Mm -hmm. and he's god Mm -hmm. right i can't think of anything more impressive than that yeah and and that got him thinking it put as Greg Coco liked to say, put a pebble in his shoe, mm-hmm. right? And he later became a Christian mm. because of that, yeah, right? A strong Christian. And mm. I thought, wow, that's kind of cool. God could use a little thing like that. Mm. It's so it's kind of hard to say. You never know. You never know what God is going to use mm. by what you say or what you do um, that may turn the lights on, right? Yeah, and get them headed towards Christ. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's ultimately what our job is to do. Mm. It's the Holy Spirit mm. who does the work of sealing a person, right? Yeah. And regenerating a person and sanctifying a person, right? Yeah. And, and is Christ in you. We're just, we have the privilege of being able to be part of that, but it's yeah. God who does the real work, right? Yeah. And that's the relieving thing about the spirit being in you it's like you know yeah but stop a minute stop stop for a minute right think about that reality right Mm. okay joshua where are you where am i where are you in that shell that i see where specifically are you if i cut off an arm are you still you Mm -hmm. or a leg are you still you so where in there are you Mm. Right? Yeah. And think about that for a minute. I mean, as interesting as that question is, to think that the Holy Spirit is in you as well, Mm -hmm. and that Holy Spirit is the same, it's all of God, Mm -hmm. right? God who is omnipresent, omnipotent, right? Yeah. Is in you. Yeah, same power. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's amazing, right? God doesn't just give you a part of him. He gives mm -hmm. you all of him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the same power that raised raised Jesus from the grave, you know, that's pretty powerful. Yeah, at any rate. Yeah. So, so, I mean, there's an example. I mean, I've, it it, it really depends, though, on what um, type of person I'm talking to, what their Mm -hmm. worldview is. A lot of times people are steeped in the belief of religious plurality where they think all paths lead to God or all Mm -hmm. religions are true. Well, that's just not, it's false. Yeah. Right. Because is that all, a, is that a short answer? Why yeah, that's false? Yeah, because um, plur, religious plurality is the belief that all religions are basically a, the same that they that they care about God and they care about morality. That's the view of of that. But mm-hmm. in fact, most religions at their core, morality is a secondary issue. There are core beliefs. Mm. right about the nature of god for example about Mm. the holy scriptures that they follow or whatever that are fundamental right and when you look at all of the and and compare those fundamental core things they all disagree with one another they all Mm. contradict one another right Mm. so if you have five things that contradict each other Mm -hmm. how many of them can be true not all of them 
No, well, or, I, only one. Only one or none. Or none, yeah. So either one of them is true or atheism is true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, there are strong reasons why atheism is not true. Um, and the biggest one is the moral argument that I mentioned before, mm-hmm. right? But there are others. You know, there are other reasons why atheism can't be true. But so what's that one? Mm-hmm. What's that one religion that's true? Yeah. Right? And how do you prove that? And I keep coming back to the fact, well, Christianity is the only one that's falsifiable. Mm-hmm. Okay? Okay, yeah. so... Could you... I, I'm curious... Does that like, help? Does yeah, that, no, yeah. no, it does. That's great. Yeah. You said, I like I like that... I, I don't think I've ever heard that, that Christianity is the only religion that's falsifiable. What what makes, just like brief examples, what makes other religions not falsifiable? Are there belief systems? Well, um, okay, good question. Um, Mormonism, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not an expert on it. I think Marty is, he's, you know, Marty studied into Mormonism more than I, he's probably forgotten more about Mormonism than I've ever (laughs) known. Right. But, but you know, you have this guy who professes that an angel appeared to him. Um, and there's no archeological evidence. There's nothing Mm. backing it up. How do you, how do you prove, how do you disprove it? Mm -hmm. You can't. Yeah. Right. Or Islam, where you know you have a, a an illiterate camel guy, a uh, camel driver, Muhammad, who was illiterate, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and he used to work in caravans, mm-hmm. you know, when he was young. All right. But he, you know, over the space of you know decades, he professed to get these visions, right, mm-hmm. from what he believes an angel, and get these prophecies, and hence the Quran, mm-hmm. you know, and the Hadith, and so forth. And how do you falsify that? How do you mm-hmm. falsify that he, you know, that he really was the prophet? Yeah, right? in the sense, you know, specifically that both of those are independent people who made a claim of something that happened off screen. That's like this happened, yeah. and that's the reason yeah. I'm qualified or this. Where, whereas Jesus, those things happened in life and history, and there are, you know, the four gospels at least plus Paul's writings. You know, mm-hmm. um, our eyewitness testimony. Yeah. About his life and the things he did, yeah. right? And you have extra biblical sources mm-hmm. um, that, you know, Suetonius and uh, Tacitus and other things that you can prove almost as much about Jesus Christ from the external sources as you can from the Bible itself, yeah. right? Yeah. I think an interesting conversation that I don't know that we'll totally dive into today, but mm-hmm. would be those, the the proofs of who Jesus was. And I think it was actually... Years ago, have you have you spoken at the high school group here mm-hmm. on Sunday mornings? Because I'm sure yes. you've done it multiple times, but I think you did while I was in high school. Yes, I did. <laughs> and I, I remember it well. And I I was thinking of it the other day even. Like I just, you know, remembering some of the things you talked about how, um, and even with the conversation I was having with my friend actually about the, for example, just how recent the writings of Jesus were to his lifestyle, like lifetime. well, Jesus never wrote anything. Yeah, all the writing, but the writings about him, the writings about Jesus, not mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, all of the all of the um, all of the early accounts. I mean, we're very early and close, right? Mm-hmm. So we have manuscripts of Mark, I think, which is the earliest gospel mm-hmm. around that are around towards the end of the first century. You know, yeah. pieces, not not the whole thing, but fragments of it, which means that the originals were much further back. So mm-hmm. we believe that Mark was written probably 45-ish, 50-ish AD, right? Mm-hmm. Which if Christ died in 33, um, that's um, that's pretty, that's really good in terms of ancient works. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, but interestingly enough, it's, um, it's the creeds themselves. I mean, you can, you can, when you when you start looking at the eyewitness testimony, I mean, I, I believe that the the Bible is the inspired and inerrant Word of God. Okay, but mm-hmm. you don't. Um, it doesn't have to be. Um, if you look at most biblical scholars, they hold Paul in high regard, and you can look at the at the writings of Paul that they mm-hmm. believe he wrote, and you can place the early creeds that Paul received within six months to a year. Of the resurrection, mm. these are these were creeds were something that you put to memory before when you still have pretty much an oral tradition mm-hmm. before you've written them down because you yeah. want to you want to memorize them and know mm-hmm. them right. And the early creeds are within if you if you look at like a Bart Bart Ehrman who's an agnostic New Testament mm-hmm. scholar, he puts the creeds around 
you know, within a year of the resurrection event, mm. right? Yeah. And he's he's a skeptic. He's no allegiance, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. And and so that's kind of amazing to me, yeah. right? Yeah, And so you don't have that in other ancient works. And, and just the mm. body of, I mean, there's over 23,000 manuscripts in different languages. Mm. I mean, we could lose all of the, I think, five or 6,000 of the Greek manuscripts, mm -hmm. okay? And we still have all the other languages, and we could recover the original words yeah. of the Bible from what we have left over, right? Do you do you know off the top of your head what those numbers are in, like, the Book of Mormon and the Quran? Like, I don't know. If you... uh, I don't know. Mm. Um, I, I would say the Quran, in terms of its, you know, once it was written, it was History written. Time, yeah. It was written like 125 years after Muhammad, I think. Okay. You know, I'd have to go back and look. Mm. And from that point onward. Um, there are questions because you had caliphs who, who you know, there was a fight over who were the true followers of Muhammad, and mm. there were a lot of writings that got destroyed by one of the caliphs. I don't remember all the details, mm. but um, you know, but from there, it's a pretty rigid method and approach they use as well. But I'm not an expert, you mm. know, in that I'd have to defer to folks who yeah. are, but. Um, you know, Mormonism. I don't. I don't. I don't think there's much. Mm -hmm. You know, once again, Marty would be a good guy to talk to yeah. on that. But yeah, yeah, it certainly doesn't have archaeological evidence. So it's 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 there. You know, when you look back, it's um, it's the uh, weight of the manuscript evidence in an mm -hmm. ancient work. Because if you throw away, for example, the New Testament, you might as well throw away all ancient writings because mm -hmm. it's the best preserved. Mm. Of anything by far. Yeah. Right? Um, you look at the archaeological evidence. You know, every shovel full of dirt that they do in the in the Holy Land basically confirms biblical truth. Mm. You know. Yeah. Um, Sir William Ramsey, who was an atheist, um, set out with the Book of Luke, and using that um, unearthed most of Asia Minor and all the major finds. Mm. And at the end of it concluded that Luke was probably one of the best historians who ever lived. Mm. Wow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. And I think even going back to the science and faith dichotomy that people, that, that we can fall into, I think there's a sense of like, oh, well that's a, that's a spiritual book. Mm. So it's not historical. There's like, it's one or the other. So we can't, you know, use it for historical value, which Obviously, does it work? Because a lot of well, I mean, it's kind of funny because I mean, when you look at statements in the Bible, mm -hmm. um, the Bible, the Bible um, makes historical statements. It never, you never see once upon a time in the Bible, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it 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 locates people in history and geography in mm -hmm. reality, yeah. right? Um, it makes statements about the nature of things, the nature of animals, the nature of the stars, the nature of things like that. Even though it's not a science book, it makes accurate statements mm -hmm. about phenomena we see mm -hmm. in the world, right? I mean, there, and, and there are many things in the Bible that just have the ring of truth to them, mm -hmm. right? Where you just know it's true. Mm -hmm. Based on your own experience, you know that what the Bible is saying is true, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I just don't see that in any of the other writings as much, mm -hmm. right? Unless they've stolen it from the Bible. Like the Quran steals a lot of the stuff from the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, anything anything that's believable to a degree is going to have a degree of truth to it. You know, like a good lie a good falsity is mostly true it's not yeah that's right it's not I mean, absolute satan left, is effective so, yeah. because he deals in half truths mm -hmm. right yeah yeah even like you know in the story of, of eden it's like he wasn't like you can fly if you eat the fruit he's like he says something you will become like god you know there's 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 some reality to what well, he was claiming right say you know all marketing today is satanic in nature right if you think about it right because they corrupt. They corrupt basically um, the hope of salvation into selling products, mm. right? Like instead of the bad news, like you you are born in sin, um, and the wrath of God. You know, you're born under the wrath of God is the reality. Mm. But the good news is what Jesus did, and the fact, right, mm. that He can wipe away that sin. And you can be imputed with his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the hope. 
Okay. Well, marketing is a corruption of that because they, you have this need, mm -hmm. you're not complete, mm -hmm. but good news, look at this product, right? Yeah. So that's what Satan did. He was the, he was the marketing, mm. you know, expert in the Garden of Eden, right? Yeah. Where he offered using a little bit of half truth, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. A product and it turned out to be false. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, that's interesting. I, I think, yeah, that, that sense of here's, here's tapping into what's true and here's a different mm -hmm. application. I you're, think there's you're, also, you're right. That's very discerning though. There's it, there's just enough truth in it, mm -hmm. um, to, to make you want to, to, to basically, you know, bait you yeah. and to sink the hook. Right. Yeah. I think I personally feel when I, you know, think about even for example, music and songs and people who aren't aligned with the reality of who Jesus is, who says something that I'm like, that's, that's true. You know, I think I, I remember growing up listening to bands. I used to think people who are writing songs and this is different from marketing, I think, but you know, people who are writing songs are trying to tell me what's true. And there is some of that. Some people are like, ah, this is a voice for me to articulate a message. Right. Right. But I think also sometimes there is this, there's this like, I'm trying to find it. And as I'm searching, I'm tapping into these, you know, lifelines of like, oh, we are hungry for something. I'm looking for something. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for satisfaction. And so sometimes it's it's like it is this deviating intent. And sometimes it's like someone who hasn't found it, who's like, I feel like there's life here, but it's not it's not quite there, you know. So there's there's just an interesting Well, music, place. music, you know, in the arts mm. tap into that things like beauty and things, those existential things that you can't voice, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They get at the heart. Yeah. And, and so that's, um, that's powerful. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, I forget who it was who said, you know, um, you know, let me control the poets and the songwriters and I'll, you know, and mm -hmm. I'll control a country, right? Yeah. And because, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of philosophy that goes on in the, in the music world and, yeah. And, and poetry and, and yeah. the arts, right, as yeah. well, that you can't explain, you feel. Yeah. And I think as, like, apologists and as evangelicals, or, you know, evangel evangelizing believers, evangelicals start to have a different tone to it. But um, as evangelizing believers, there's, I think those are, like, inroads in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like there's this, even as you mentioned with the worldview, and we right. have, there's there's things that are, like, in every worldview, and even in my own worldview, I'm like, there's things that are definitely, I know, and there's things that I'm like, I don't really get how these, but, you know, if in someone's worldview where they're locked into something that's true, and I as a believer, I'm like, oh, that's, that's true because of who Jesus is, and you may not have made that connection, but I see that that's what's happening in your, in your heart, and I want to press into that, and I want to meet mm -hmm. you there in that space and say like, here's, right. you know, I would, I would recommend a strong book to you. Um, uh, Jay Warner Wallace's most recent book, person of interest. Oh okay. yeah. Um, because it looks at the, it looks at what happened at the resurrection, which is the epicenter in history. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, there's an AD and a BC in our timeline for yeah. a reason, you know, and Christ's life is at the epicenter of that. Right. Mm -hmm. And then if you, if you look at it, you can track throughout history rings in different sort of rings that rippled, Mm -hmm. from that event yeah. through history, whether it's in art mm -hmm. or music, literature, yeah. um, science, you name it, he tracks all of these things yeah. that all stem from that, mm. from the life and, and of Christ. Yeah, that sounds like an interesting read. I'll definitely yeah, check Person it out. of Interest, great yeah. book. Okay, sweet, thank you. Is there, so we've pretty much wrapped up the topic, I guess, um, and we'll figure out what that was after. <laughs> well, reality. So, yeah. so reality. Um, my whole talk on reality will be about unpacking what is reality, right? Okay. There's a, and I have like Dale's working definition of what that is. Uh -huh. Is what I want to give us to. that. Well, uh, is that if a spoiler? I, if, if I can, yeah, I don't want to spoil it. Okay, um, <laughs> but um, you know, and and worldviews figure into that, and we look at the different views, traditional views of reality. There's idealism, realism. Mm. Um, um, pragmatism and existentialism are like the biggest ones, mm. right? And you can see how those things have unraveled throughout history and the impacts mm. they've had on lives, right? Mm. Um, so it'll be, it hopefully it'll be interesting yeah. to get into. We'll touch upon that. Yeah, that'll be awesome. But um, yeah. Yeah. But, I was going to say, is there anything you want to share that just you, you know, would like to share with, with the podcast that we didn't talk about, we didn't get to? Well, like I said before, I mean, increasingly... 
um, when I look at what's going on in our nation, you know, where people are just like, they don't even know what's true anymore, mm. right? I mean, it's really sad to look how fast um, our country's unraveled. And, you know, I, it keeps coming back to the words of Pontius Pilate, you know, what is truth? What mm. is truth? And, and truth is what corresponds to reality and what's reality and all that stuff. And so, um, and, and Jesus is the source of it. And so increasingly, when I talk to people, I try to get to Jesus quickly, mm. right? And start from there and work backwards on these mm. other things. Because, um, once again, they have a high opinion of him usually, mm-hmm. right? Okay? And that's something I can work with. Yeah. Okay? It's difficult. It's difficult um, to use tradi- more traditional things of preaching from the Bible or something like that because um, even within Christian circles, people who call themselves Christians, only 4% of the people have ever read the Bible, mm. right? Um, I ask that in my class. There are two questions I ask in my class. The first one is, why are you a Christian? Mm-hmm. Okay. The second one is, um, how many people believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God. It's amazing. All the hands will go up. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I'll say, now under oath, how many of you have actually read it? <laughs> right? Man, exposed. <laughs> okay. And, yep. you know, you think if God wrote a book, <laughs> you'd probably want to read it. Right? Okay. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, my big message to Christians is, you know, you need to know your Bible. Mm-hmm. You need to read the Bible. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I had an elder in my old church um who uh, he, he did uh, something kind of funny because he was on a he was talking to a guy who said he was a Christian but he hadn't read the Bible mm-hmm. and he and he and he asked this elder he says so what do you do he says I'm a world famous physicist and the guy said really he says yeah I have a physics book on my shelf I've never read <laughs> either right you know and yeah. it's, uh, it, but you see yeah. my point I mean yeah. it's important to read the Bible yeah because in it God reveals who He is mm-hmm. and what the plan of salvation is for us and yeah. offers that hope. And it's things you wouldn't know because you can't discover a lot of it scientifically. He had to reveal it to you. Mm. Right? And so you definitely want to read the Word of God, yeah. right? Okay, and so that's a big one. But that other question is, why are you a Christian? Why are you a Christian? I'm a Christian because God made me and built me with the intent of knowing him, and Jesus paid for my sins and died Yeah, and then rose again. Yeah. So I it's, could it's true, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Christ rose from the dead. But yeah. you'd be surprised when you ask people, why are you a Christian? Oftentimes they'll tell you how they became a Christian, mm. right? And it's like, well, you know, I I met Joshua for coffee one day, and we got to talking about Jesus and the uh-huh. things, and the next thing you know, I'm a Christian. It's like, mm. and it's like, oh, really? You know, well, if, uh, you know, if Caleb had come in and talked to you about the Quran, would you be a Muslim, you know, over mm. coffee? You know, is that how it works? And it's, so why are you yeah. a Christian is... Is you hit on it it's because mm. it's true yeah right yeah. So, yeah that's good that's good awesome well thank you so much Dale great to have you 